Police. Well, police, they ask for settlement. Police is smelling that uh, this guy is like they are enjoying in that place, so they are smoking, they are drinking. So police now came through the window. Hey, boys, you're not gonna say to us. You know, say to us, we will arrest you. Say, how come you say we will consent to you? We buy something for you. Which kind of thing is this? So I would like to see those ones uh, in uh, handcuffs. Like if I, there is anybody that should be in handcuffs, okay? But how do you kind of uh, talk about uh, the uh, policemen? And then you come across a video where they are teaching the Nigerian policemen the, the new old anthem. Sorry, the old new anthem, rather. The Nigeria's uh, old new anthem. For those of you who might want to kind of learn one or two things, right? Let's do it here. Yeah. Standardized anthem. Standard one. Nigeria, we hate the Okay, if that is to be done, 
We are going to take that position of salute and we sing the national anthem. Let me stand this side so that all of you will be looking at it. We salute and we sing the national anthem. Okay, so uh, the standardized national anthem. One, two, go. Did you learn anything from that? Because I have to put that information on the screen so that some of you will not be seated there and be like, "My, why are you making us watch a skit? It's not a skit, though. Uh -huh. Those are the Nigerian police uh, men learning the Nigeria's uh, old, new anthem. Okay? But that's that. Meanwhile, uh, have you ever seen a full? I told you that if you go on TikTok, there are full of new jihadists on TikTok. But you know something? I found one that, uh, just like you know, Nigerians, they will say uh, there are God fearing criminals in Nigeria too. Just say we about their criminal politicians. Some will tell you that all politicians are the same. But me, the ones maybe are the support, eh? I know say they are criminals and all of that, but they are God-fearing. My own criminal is a God-fearing criminal. Oh, my own criminal is a philanthropist. Oh, my own criminal is, uh, I don't know. So they love their criminals differently though, right? But there are others too who are like trying to say, oh, we are not all criminals. I am a full and but in order to challenge. I am a Yoruba, but kind of. Anyway, I will introduce you to this one who has something to say. He is offering solution to uh, the farmers' other clashes. I don't know if you need it. Let it be on record. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I go by the name Ibrahim Upanyo Fulibe Zam. I am a full learner by tribe. Apart from following cows, I have no other business. And I know there's many farmers, apart from farming, they don't have any other business. But I know sometimes my cows used to enter their farm and spoil their farm. I know it is very painful as a farmer to, cow, to as a farmer to see a cow inside your farm. You feel very, it is very, very painful. Because me, as my own me, based on my own, if I see any person that like caught my cow or beat my cow, I feel the pain. I feel, I feel it like it is very painful in my mind. So I know that farmers they used to feel pain if they see cows enter their farm too. But please believe me, it's not all Fulanis that is used to allow their cows to spoil the other's farm. It's not all Fulanis. I know there's, there's a bad amount of, amount of us that used to allow their cows to spoil you guys' farm. It is, it is very, 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 very bad. I know you guys must feel, must feel the pain. Because apart from farming, you don't have any other business like us, Fulani. Apart from following cows, we don't have any business. But I have one advice to give you guys. Anytime that you catch a Fulani man, spoil your farm, please, please, please don't beat him. Just arrest him. 
just call him and show him, tell him that so so person you don't spoil my farm. On on the Manawi. Because you know some some of our people. You know how some people are. So you must like you must know you must you must like you, you must take it easy because I know some of some farmers, the more they catch full and spoiling their farm, they will just carry cutlass or they will just carry some of them used to carry gun. They will say they will shoot their cows. But don't try that way. It will not work. I mean I used to follow a cow. Always. If my cow is spoiled the, the farmer's farm. I will find the owner of the farm. I will, I will tell him that my cow don't spoil your farm. If I don't see him, I will come back tomorrow. If I come tomorrow, if I see him, I will say, so so person, my cow don't spoil your farm yesterday. But please, 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 I, I apologize. So many farmers, they used to say, no problem, I should go. But some of them, they will say, no, I must pay. But I will pay. I will pay. Because I know it's only that farm. It's the way that they are surviving with their family. So how can I spoil the farm I run? They have family like me. So I must pay. How many times would they tell you before you know that Nigeria is not for you? Ah! Now they never leave you. They have left you behind. Photo. Not be juju be that. I'm sorry, you. Oh, sorry, you. Oh. May God not allow them to kill you. 70 years old, man. So would you say you just watched a God-fearing Pulani ads man? Or you just watched an entitled brat that uh, his entitlement seems to have his own image of his, I mean, it seems to have the image of his own. He wears it with so much. Hey, 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 hey. No, 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 no. He's giving conditions on how the farmers should react. That would not work. If we destroy your farm, some of, you know, some of us are very stubborn. So you have to, when they destroy your farm, you wake up, you just borrowed 10 million naira, and then you've cultivated this land, I mean, this uh, uh, hectares of land, and there you are, you've, I employ the people to help you put things up. And then you come back one morning when you are looking to harvest maybe in another two months. Then you come back one morning and you see the cows have destroyed the farm. So you have to be very careful because you are about to go and talk to full animal. Don't upset him. Don't make him angry. Don't attack him. Don't threaten him. Just find him. And sorry, Uncle Fuller, Uncle Artsman. How are you, sir? Are you is everything okay? Are you enjoying this area? How about the cows? Are they fine? See, sir, I have a concern, sir. Sir Fuller, the Artsman. Yesterday I came and I came to my. Don't don't be upset. Too. I'm not angry. Yo. I'm not angry. Yo. No, 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 no. So that I, Uluwa, me. I'm not angry. I just want you to know that uh, this uh, our fellow citizens. So eh? I know they must probably didn't know. Maybe they didn't know it's a farm. Because I know if they knew that it's a farm, they won't go there. So, Esa, anything you can do to help me, please. Eh? I borrowed money to to cultivate the farm. So the full learning would then be like, mm, I like your approach. You are different. If it's others now, they will bring out cutlass. They will bring out gun. Or they will be threatening us. But you, ah, you have home training. Uh, that's fine. I will see what I can do. Because that's, the, that's how the whole scenario is going to play out. That's what I smell from that video. And the reason why you watch that is just for you to imagine. If one of them feels like that, how do you think? hundreds of them or thousands of them feels like at that age that guy couldn't be more than maybe 21 22 but guess what he was born after they started demonstration of crazy in nigeria despite 25 years of democracy he still have that mentality he said me i've got no other job i follow cow it's my only job my only business you 
you have farm, you have no other job. So I understand. No, you don't understand. If you understand, eh, as the 21st century Fulani, you will never follow that archaic <clears throat> backward culture or tradition or idea that the rogues in Agbada in Babariga flying private jets continue to tell you is your way of life and other people would have to pay for it. They have to pay with their land. They have to pay with their lives. They have to pay with their hard work, their crops. Are you kidding me? So if you have uh, young people at the age of 21 to 25 with that mentality, are you still looking forward to exist in the same country with this kind of uh, people? How do you fix this? How? What kind of policy are you going to put together to put an end to this? Who is going to implement that? And that's why a lot of us, we just like, we don't want to be treating all this headache. Break up Nigeria and save lives. It's not going to be an Eldorado. But there are some certain problems that shouldn't be problems at all, if not because the entire system has become so compromised, rigged against you, defending it, or trying to keep it uh, active or keep it alive. It's to your own detriment. It's going to going to end badly. It's going to end badly for all of us if we do that. So, uh, dear Fulani brother, you will need to go back to Futajalon and you would have to keep your, your cows within your father's farmland. If you have, if you inherited cows from your, from your fathers and they didn't have any, uh, the futuristic idea of uh, building their own ranch, now, you are wearing that garb of entitlement. We see it. We see it. We feel it. They, just, they are telling us to pretend that it is nothing. Don't you think? That's what they are saying to us. They are like, trying to make us feel like, yes, this thing happens, but it's not a big deal. Listen, we can all coexist. We can... No, we can't. Some group of people are going to be hurting. How could you say those who are hurting, those whose lives are being cut short, those whose livelihood are being destroyed, those with, whose ancestral lands, their indigenous lands, are being taken away from them, are being chased. They are now being chased to refugee camps. How do you think they will live with that? And then there would actually be peace progress. Come on, come on now. How? It is because of this entitlement. And they are pushing it. Their politicians are pushing the same entitlement in Abuja right now. Don't ban open grazing. No to ranching like that. The Fulanese can all use ranching. It is their culture to be moving about and roaming about. Are you being serious? How come the Fulanese, Fulanese are not roaming to South Africa? Roaming to uh, Kenya? Fulanese should be roaming straight to Congo. Why are they not roaming straight to Liberia? Why are they not roaming to all these areas? How come all of the other Fulanis have been told to come to Nigeria? Because Nigeria is a lawless place, a borderless country. The criminals in charge of the place would rather make money from this unfortunate thing than fix it. So that entitlement is a problem. And if entitlement is going to be, it shouldn't be for the Fulanis. All of us should be entitled. All of us. And that would have probably made us a citizens, right? It would have made us probably made us a citizens of Nigeria. But with, with uh, citizenship, right? But we, we are not citizens, we are subjects. And I reject to be a subject. My children will reject to be subjects. In a contraption put together that is pure oligarchy, but they call it democracy. This is not normal. This is not right. It is not. If people are allowed to decide things for themselves, for real, none of this is going to be allowed. None. If not for the weak men who fancies all this uh, gold than the lives of the people that they are using as their meal tickets, though. So anyway, that one is that. Let's go back here to that Zamfara. Here is a report of AIT that is not in Ausa or what have you now, okay? Listen. Governor Daudelawal of Zamfara State 
explained that one of the suspected bandit leaders was traced to Bochi, where he was arrested, while the other was picked up in Guso, and they were charged to court for prosecution. But the court granted them bail based on an order from some people in Abuja who had assured them that they would be released. The governor warned the judiciary to fear God and discharge their responsibilities with the utmost integrity and honesty for the collective interest of all the law-abiding citizens. He noted that everyone is aware of the challenges Zamfara State is facing, including banditry, kidnapping, cattle rustling and other sundry crimes. He says all hands must be on deck to tackle them. I recognize that the good people of Zamfara State require a judicial system that protects the rights of citizenry. They expect a system of justice that gives every person fair and equal access to administration of justice and guarantees their dignity, rights and security regardless of gender, influence or any other societal differences in the process. It is for this reason that this administration prioritizes on the improvement of the justice sector. The chief judge of Zamfara State, Justice Kulu Aliu, charged the newly sworn in magistrates to live up to the expectations of their offices as all eyes are on the judiciary. Anyway, that's just like me letting you listen to the English version using that report on what happened in Zamfara. Away from Zamfara, and I'm going to take a stop. Uh, yeah, let's stop by at, uh, in, uh, sorry, rather stop by to see Alaji Asari in one of his elitist uh, diatribes. So he was there talking about uh, the queries. You know, there is a conversation around the Anioma people, and I've seen a lot of people now, possibly who came across uh, the video, uh, the parts of the broadcast we spoke about the Anioma, uh, you know, proposal to start to have Anioma states. And there are people who are like saying, no, there is uh, Anioma people are not Igbos. It is uh, the combi they said Anioma was created as a political, yeah, 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 right? And then uh, there are there are Ika people, there are oh yeah, I've forgotten all the list. Okay. Anyway, Sha, part of that conversation has been kind of spread everywhere too. Where the queries, some are saying they are not Igbos, they are not Igbo, and others say you know Ikwere is Igbo. Others still are the part of uh, the Obigbo, the Obigbo. Some will say, no, we are not Obigbo, we are Oyibo. So those who believe that they are Oyibo, they say they are not Igbos. Those who are like, who believe that they are uh, Obigbo, those ones are confidently will tell you we are Igbos. But there are some certain things uh, that are going on, okay? And there's also, okay, certain things going on. The first one is that uh, after the Nigeria uh, genocidal war, Okay, of 1967 to 1970, the political class, the Fulani ruling class at the time, they came together. And in their political solution to that Nigeria, no part of Nigeria will be bold enough to break up or attempt to want to break up from Nigeria in the future. So they started with the Igbos. So they started redrawing the, the map through the creation of state, they started redrawing the map of uh, the uh, eastern part of Nigeria. Okay, because you see, the Igbos, they were major ethnic group in Nigeria as a whole, okay? And they are major ethnic group uh, in uh, the eastern part of Nigeria, but there are many other ethnic nationalities there. Somehow, somehow, the criminals in Nigeria, through the, what do you call it? through their propaganda machine after the genocidal war. So they redrew the map and they started cutting the Igbo communities, Igbo towns, Igbo cities, and all of them that they could cut off. They started cutting them off out of uh, the main 
the outland of the Igbo land, specifically cutting them to other border states. But at the time, eh, some of us, well, okay, some of us who follow this, eh, we initially thought they did that to reduce them in outlook. Okay? And then for the horror of the civil war, there are so many other, including this Anyoma, Asaba, a few places where the Igbos were indigenous to, eh? Because of that civil war and the horror of it, many, many of them had to deny their connection to the Igbo. They had to deny their Igbo link totally. Even though they couldn't drop the language, they tried to dilute it, not to sound Igbo, not to ensure you get until the 80s, 80s, 90s, when some of them are now kind of bold enough to start naming their children or start giving their children Igbo name. But they kind of, they were denying that because it was so horrible, right? The war, 